Hey. hey everybody, uh, welcome to the Really Late Show with um, Chris and Craig. I uh, got Craig with me. Uh, Craig, how are you doing today? Doing pretty well, how are you Chris? You can hear me Craig, right? I can hear you, yeah. Okay, stuff was going off my um, mic cord, but I think it's okay. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, big night tonight, kind of weird. I just woke up, I was a little tired today. Um, and just woke up. Man, it's a good month for snoozing, Craig. <laughs> Must be, yeah. It's a, it's a good night to take a nap. Yeah. And the other big news, and this is kind of attached to what we're going to be talking about in our first segment. Um, Craig, we didn't even talk about this. We had a bunch of stuff to talk about the last couple of weeks. The new Madden game's out. I think oh, yeah, we, yeah, yeah. I think last year we talked about it for six weeks in a row, and and I think we have more to talk about this year because I'm just mentioning it to you. But uh, yeah, I I play a little bit. Haven't had a ton of time to play it, but it's been kind of interesting. Um, I, I was telling a friend at work. It was kind of weird because um I ended up buying it off Amazon, and I'm like, great, I don't have to go to the store. I'm all good. But Amazon, unfortunately, doesn't deliver to you this the day it comes out. Because, like, Friday, I was hoping I could, like, you know, work during the day. And at night, I could yeah. open my man game. But on, I think it was, like, Friday morning. It was, like, Christmas morning. I woke up, checked my Amazon, said it's not going to be ready till Sunday. Ooh. And I didn't even get it till, like, late Sunday. So, okay. I loaded it up, and it's been okay. I haven't had a chance to play a lot of it, but so far it's been okay. So, I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm getting older, too, and some busy... I don't know. It's been a weird year. What's your your go-to? Do you like to just play games, or do you like to play franchise mode? What do you do? Well, here's the thing. I'm a nerd about this. My... If my brother was listening in, he's going to get mad, because I, I, I just geek out and get real nerdy on it. Last year, I took over every team on like I started a franchise I took over every team I just played games I got for most of one year okay. so like you go for the schedule there's like two teams playing you're like I like this team better you play as that one team you play a short game and yeah. it just kind of you got to play different teams it was kind of fun this year you can only do 20 teams at a time it doesn't okay. let you pick all 32 and I'm sure I'm hitting the wrong button. I'll have to look it up. I don't even try to look it up on Google. So that's that's how rough my life's getting, Craig. <laughs> yeah, right. I hear you. I, hear I, you. I, I feel weird saying that. It's stuff like you shouldn't talk about in public. You know, you're like, is Chris playing all these games by himself? Well, hey, it was our, you know, we're still really in the midst of COVID, so I have more time to do that. And now, yeah. I've taken some time to play it in the last couple of days, but... Unfortunately, I can't select every team to take over. So, okay. well, oh, well. you got to get the Lions, man. You got to play with the Lions and uh, get that young up and coming team. Yeah, I've been to Steelers and eh, they're all right. Yeah. Not as good as they've been in years past. So, yeah. probably how it's going to be in real yeah. life, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And the other thing, too, Craig, um, probably something that nobody in the Hound really cares about, but. Our teams face each other this week. Um, the Steelers yeah, and Lions yeah. in preseason ball. Yeah, and apparently they're <clears> going to play the starters. Both teams are planning on playing the starters for like a half. So that's uh, kind of interesting. I mean, obviously with only three preseason games these days, they you got to decide how you're going to sort of do your preseason. And I'm kind of intrigued to see the, the last game is usually the throwaway where no one plays. But in this case uh, – it looks like both teams have sort of agreed to, to load it up and put the starters in for most of the game, or for a half at least. Although I, apparently Jared Goff isn't playing, though. Well, and here's the other thing that kind of confuses me, and just as a promo purpose, we are starting something new tonight. Um, we're testing this. I'm not sure if it's gotten the whole year commitment from the person involved yet, but each week we're going to do a real brief show about the Buckeyes and the, um, the Cincinnati Bengals and the um, Cleveland Browns. Uh, we do our Steelers stuff. I know it's not really Ohio, but... Sorry, I'm a Steelers guy. Uh, but Pierre Holland, uh, he's our friend from uh, Canton Depository. He's going to do some work with that tonight. Um, yeah, I bring it up, Craig, because like I got mentioned, it's weird because in years past when they've had a four-game preseason, like the fourth game, nobody plays in the past, right. like the last game. Um, and it's weird because every team is doing it very differently this year. Um, 
For example, the Browns, uh, they lost on Sunday, but they hardly play any starters. Uh, they were playing the Eagles. Uh, while in the meantime, like, I know the Steelers kind of used the third game as a dress rehearsal game where the Stars played most of the first half. And, um, and I think the argument you can make for Steelers is they have new players and need to try them out together. But then the Browns, I mean, they got new players, and especially a quarterback. Um, Craig, I don't even know if Jacoby Brissett, who's going to lead the Browns all, for the first 11 games of the year, has even played in the preseason yet. Which is weird. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I haven't really had a chance to see the Browns yet, but uh, you know, you kind of think that you'd have Deshaun Watson play a lot more because this is it. You know, I mean, for eleven games, he's out. You're not going to get him back for quite a while, so you, you kind of wonder why maybe they're not riding him a little bit and letting him get more reps because he's not going to get those reps once the season starts. But every team's different. Everybody, you know, has their own way of doing things, and you know. But this some teams is... don't play their their guys at all. Some teams play everybody and just you know try to get those those reps as much as they can. But this year it's been very very different. But usually at least people follow some of the same template. And this year it's like everyone's doing completely different. Like yeah, up is down. I mean, like <laughs> I I thought like the Steelers they've traditionally not played anybody in the last game, and you know the fact that they're playing starters. I mean yeah now. Well, the Steelers are 2-0. Oh. Part of the problem with the Steelers, their offensive line took a huge step back. Right. And I'm wondering if part of it is just saying, okay, we need to have a decent, you know, who cares if we're going to lose on this weekend, but we need right. at least have a decent offensive line. Well, we bring all this up, and as the season starts, we might have a little less Browns talk. We'll let uh, Peter help out that with us so we can talk more about the pop culture stuff we like talking about. Yeah. But last week, uh, there was a big story break. Uh, they finally uh, figured out Deshaun Watson's penalty. Uh, yeah. It turns out to be 11 games. Um, also with a $5 million fine. Um, Craig, we talked about this a few weeks back when they first said six games. I don't know. I mean, are you feeling... Uh, we were very queasy about the fact that he only got six games. I don't know. Do you feel better about what the NFL did? Because it wasn't just 11 games. It was a five million dollar fine. Where originally there was no fine. I mean, obviously, I think this is better than what the initial suspension was going to be. I, it just it just seems so strange and arbitrary. Eleven games, and you know, he just so happens to get a bye week to get prepared, and then he's going to be back in week thirteen, essentially against the Houston Texans, his former team. It just screams too coincidental for my liking, and it just makes me wonder how do you how did you get to eleven games as being the barometer? I don't mind the suspension; you could have gone more, and I would have been okay with that for sure. Um, especially with the way the Cleveland Browns negotiated his contract, where he was basically only getting about a million dollars this year, and then a lot of his contract kicks in next year, and then the the rest of the contract. So, uh, you know, honestly, I, I just feel like it just, the optics are, are still kind of spotty for me at best with the NFL because they wanted to, to kind of send a message and maybe they did to a degree, but I don't know that they really sent a good message. I think they've, they've made themselves look bad with this arbitrary 11 games where he's going to come back against the Texans and, a $5 million suspension for a guy that's guaranteed $230 million. Not really a big dent in his pocketbook. It's a weird number. You're right. Um, again, I don't agree with this. I'm just saying maybe this is why it's a number. Um, you know, and we can talk about this in a second. It's kind of weird that they, that it was a agreed to settlement. Yeah. I, I yeah. Mean, Craig, just imagine, and, you know, I I know we're not into this, but try to think of something that we would get suspended for at work. I mean, say we um, made up a story, and that wouldn't be a suspension. That would probably be a firing. But it would be weird that, you know, say we made up stories at work and we were in trouble for it and everything. That shouldn't be a settlement. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, here's the punishment. You're fired or something. 
I mean, unless we felt that we had a good court case against our employer, I mean, can you imagine? There's not many times where, unless they were afraid we were going to sue them, that there'd be a settlement. And yeah. I, I, mean, I, I, I kind of got, yeah, it just really seemed weird. And I, I know, yeah, there's evidence, I guess, against Deshaun Watson. The original judge said, hey, it looked like he did something bad. But you got to remember, too, he hasn't been convicted of this. I'm not saying he's innocent of everything. But what what is the settlement involved? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I mean, I guess maybe the only argument is somebody could say, well, if he hasn't been guilty in a court, maybe he shouldn't have been suspended as long. So maybe that's why there's a settlement. But if he did something wrong, it's weird that he's negotiated some with the NFL. I mean, you know, Right. It, I mean, and the it, fact it just, that the whole he, thing seems strange. Well, and the fact that the first judge essentially said she found evidence that he was a sexual predator and he committed sexual misconduct. And still, she decided the six games based on, you know, potential you know, precedents that were, have been set over time in the NFL and, and okay, whatever. And then the NFL's like, no, 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 we don't agree with that. So what my guess, my biggest question is, is, you know, the NFL wanted to kind of make an example of all this. Why, why did they negotiate a settlement? Why, why is there a settlement negotiation on a guy that they're saying we need to make an example of him? And then you start negotiating a settlement for his punishment. That doesn't make any sense. It really makes no sense to me. And how many cases did he settle? I think he settled almost every one of them, all but maybe one or two, possibly. Okay. So, I mean, yeah, you're talking more than more than a dozen and almost two dozen. Well, and, and I've, heard, I've heard some people ask because one of the big questions when this whole thing first started was, it's easy to compare it. You know, like Big Ben, he went for some issues. Um, he sold two cases and. You know, it was similar to what Sean Watson. There wasn't any conviction in court. I'm not even sure Ben ever got charged for that. Um, but he did sell two cases. He got suspended for six games. It got reduced to four. Yeah. I, I've heard it's not fair to either Deshaun or Ben to compare the two cases. But like, uh, but if you let's go there for a second. If we say okay, you know, Ben got four games for t- the settlement of two cases. You know, Deshaun, you know, what, you said, what, a dozen, two dozen, so it's probably many more times what Ben did. You know what I mean? I I, I think, I think I'm going to stick with what I said in the past. The NFL wants to market its game to a lot more people than it did back then. Yeah. Um, you have to send a message if you're marketing your, your point to other people. Because there was a lot of guys that were kind of turned off by the fact that it didn't seem to be a heavy enough suspension. Um, which guys should be turned off. But in addition, women, I mean, what are you trying to say? If you're like, oh, this sport's not too bad to check out. And then you're like, oh, the guy is accused of, you know, abusing a bunch of us and he only got six games. What's going on? Yeah. I, I, I think it may have made sense. I mean, Deshaun deserves a chance to come back. I don't think it should have been permanently banned for the game. But I think if there was one year, he's away for one year. As you said, Craig, right now, game 12, and I don't think the public is really going to care about the Houston Texans game as much because the Houston Texans stink. They were sunk with or without Watson. Yeah, I mean, the, the bigger point is is that, you know, he's coming back against a team that he hates and they hate him and... and... Well, they're just in the middle of all of this too, because the Texans have also been embroiled in this sexual misconduct allegation. So, if, if the Browns are anywhere close to a playoff spot, or if the thought is, "Oh wow, Deshaun Watson's back," and they get hot, maybe they get a playoff spot. You're right, Craig. It's going to be the biggest story in the NFL, probably. You know, unless the Browns are like winless when Deshaun comes back, and, and yeah. So, what's going on? There's a suspension. But in essence, is playing into a huge story in the NFL. I mean, you would think part of a suspension would be, hey, you know, nobody cares. Um, you know, you're away from the game. Now it becomes a huge, huge major story when he comes back in Week 12. You know? Yeah, I mean, this it's a big storyline coming back, and it's just, uh, you know, I, I just kind of wonder if the if the NFL really missed the mark on this when they when they wanted to aggressively pursue 
you know, taking taking this further than the six games and knowing what the judge found in her findings and the investigation and yet they really I mean, they could have gone for a year. I mean, you know, they wanted to dig their feet to the sand here and say, We're not moving on this, we're gonna suspend you for <clears throat> longer than six games and then they negotiate and come to 11 i don't understand why they backed down from this did they think that he was gonna appeal a full season suspension and then you know they were gonna lose that i don't know i also kind of wonder too like you know we've seen this in the past especially with like josh gordon when he had his marijuana convict you know his marijuana issues and always got suspended for marijuana he was always kind of put into this program of if you get better, you can be reinstated. Well, why not suspend Watson indefinitely, give it a year and see where he's at. If he's had any other misconduct allegations or if he's lived a squeaky clean life and then you reinstate him. But in the, in this case, like right. it's just a weird optic of the NFL not seeming to care about sexual assault allegations and being more upset about gambling with calvin ridley or you know ped use or whatever it may be they don't seem to really worry so much about the sexual assault nature of this issue well i think they're saying a message saying they do care to a certain point i just they're playing into the hype of the nfl by allowing him to come back in the stretch run of the season you know what i mean like if they just said right's right and <clears throat> he comes back like you could make the argument say suspend him indefinitely you revisit after a year. So, yeah, it becomes a big story when you revisit the suspension, but he misses a year no matter what. Now, again, if the Browns are anywhere near playoff contention, you know, we're, we're probably going to talk a lot about this in Week 12 the NFL season, you know, uh, rightly or wrongly. It, it, it's tough. It's just, uh, it's rough. All right, well, I hate to get past what happened with Deshaun, but I think one question we probably need to answer I don't know if we have enough time to segment to play a schedule game where we go every game of the season and say, okay, the Browns are going to be this record or not. Let me ask it in this way. I don't think there's any guarantee that when Deshaun comes back, they'll have six games left in the season. I don't think there's any guarantee, you know, he's going to win six games in a row. I mean, he's a good quarterback, but, you know, he hasn't played for a while. Who knows what the case might be. I think, Craig, in the NFL, you have to be, what, 9-8 and eight or probably 10-7 and seven to be able to make the playoffs. I know it's not set, but that seems to be a good thing, a yeah. record. I wonder, Craig, after the 11-game suspension, obviously the Browns will play 11 games, what record do you think they would need to be at to have a chance with Deshaun? I, I think they're going to have to have a good stretch there, I, no, no matter who the quarterback is, Jacoby Brissett or... Joshua Dobbs. I mean, they're going to have to have a good a good record because the AFC is loaded, and I th- I really think the Bengals are are for real. I think the the Ravens are going to be good, and they're going to con- contend in the AFC North. Um, I think the Steelers are kind of a wild card right now because you don't really know how they're going to play. They've got a great defense, but quarterback play, offensive line play is going to be a big issue for them if they can get that solved. They're a playoff team because their defense is that great. So I, I, I kind of feel like the Browns are going to be, if if they're, I mean, they have a good team. You know, they have a good offensive line, good running game. They, they, they can lean on a solid defense. They don't have a great receiving core. But, I mean, you know, I think if you're the Browns, you've got to hope that you're like 6-5 and five after those 11 games, at least 6-5. and five. And that's the and that's assuming too that you win a lot of games with Watson coming back because if you're not six and five heading into that that stretch that final stretch where yeah you're probably guaranteed to win over the tight over the uh, Texans but you know they've got some difficult matchups even in the second half of the season there's not a lot of just easy wins in the NFL anyway I I don't know I don't I think it's going to be an uphill battle for the Browns as a playoff contender this year. Yeah, I, I think realistically, maybe you would think four and two might be possible if he comes in cold. You know, just shine for the last six games of the year. Yeah, and you're right. If that's the case, it's got to be six and five because if you're four and two after six and five, you're what ten and seven, which probably gets you in the playoffs. But you're going to be a wild card team. I mean, you're not going to be a highly seeded team, and 
Yeah, I don't know if it's going to happen. And I'll be honest with you, Jacoby Brissett's not a terrible quarterback. I think at best he's a 500 quarterback. You know. Well, I mean, look at the here's the schedule once Watson gets back for the final six games at the Texans, at the Bengals, home for the Ravens, home for the Saints, at the Commanders, and then at the Steelers. You know, I mean, you could maybe argue the Texans and the and the Commanders might be the easy winnable games and maybe a toss up there with the Steelers to end the year, but it's on the road. Yeah. You're talking about the Saints, who are very good defensively, the Ravens, and the Bengals. Those are some really difficult matchups. And if you look at the schedule before they get there, they're playing teams like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They're playing at Buffalo. They're playing at Baltimore. They're playing home against the Chargers. The only real winnable like guarantee wins that I could see on the schedule – in that first half of the season when you have a backup quarterback playing are maybe the Jets at home and then the Falcons on the road. That's two games that you could think, okay, they're probably going to win those games. I don't know that they'll beat the Panthers week one. I don't know that they'll beat the Steelers at home. I don't think they could I – I mean, the Patriots handled them last year. If you remember, they gave up like 51 points last year to the Patriots. So, I mean, they're playing at the Dolphins, which the Dolphins – could be a better team this year. I, I mean, if they go six and five in that eleven game stretch, that's probably a, a very Herculean effort. Well, and it's the NFL. I mean, there's not many games that are going to be blowouts, and there's games where you know Deshaun Watson, no Deshaun Watson, they're toss ups like that. Even that Browns Panthers game, yeah. I think that could go two very different ways. I think Baker Mayfield could wake up and say, "Yeah." Man, I'm going to get back at the Browns. He'll right. throw five touchdowns. He'll blow out the Browns, or I can see Baker Mayfield, you know, messing up against the Browns. That right. horrible right. game. The yeah. Browns win. And so a lot of these games that we sit here and say, "Oh yeah, Browns are going to win this or whatever," we don't know. Yeah. It's like the Steelers. If we took the time and believe me, we don't have time. I think all of our listeners are like, "Thank God." <laughs> uh, but if we did the Steelers schedule game, we did that on a Steelers podcast, and I think I had the Steelers. At 12 wins. Not that I think the Steelers are going to be that great, but there's a lot of hand, toss-up games with the Steelers. Now, to my discredit, I I gave the Steelers more wins than the toss-up games and losses. But, you know, you know this, Craig. The NFL's goofy, man. Yeah. I mean, they used to say there's not that much difference between a 6-10 and 10 and 10-6 team. And yeah. I know we have 17 games now, so it's hard to... I don't right, know what that right, comparison yeah. is now. Yeah. But I, I still think that case exists. I mean... Yeah, yeah. I, I, it's going to be the AFC's challenging. They, you know, they maybe get a little help by playing the Jets. Although, who knows? You know, the Jets might be better. The Falcons are on the road, so maybe that's one of those games where the Falcons can squeeze out one of their few victories. People assume they'll have this year. You know, they're going to be going up against Jacoby Brissett. I mean, I wouldn't be shocked if this Browns team is anywhere between maybe ten and seven and like five and twelve because you know if you don't get good quarterback play from Brissett, that's eleven games that you're playing with a quarterback that while he can come in in relief and help out and maybe be a good bridge, you're you're talking about, you know, this team last year with an injury plagued quarterback season missing out on the postseason. And I really believe that Brissett is not necessarily an upgrade even over an injured Baker Mayfield. So, uh, you know, this is going to be a tough year for the Browns. And I know a lot of people have high expectations, but I kind of feel like with an 11 game suspension, you got to be, you got to temper expectations. And I also think you need to temper, temper expectations on what Deshaun Watson's going to look like when he gets out on the field for those right. final six games. Is he going to be, anywhere close to what he was the two years ago where he was a star attraction in the NFL in one of those young quarterbacks that the NFL wanted to kind of hitch their wagons to and just ride to the advertising moon. I don't know. He may not be. And I'm not basing that off of his first preseason game where he looked a little rusty. It just, you know, it's been a while since he's played NFL football and it's been a while. It's going, he's not going to be able to practice these 11 weeks. Once the preseason's over, he's got to go. So it's not like he's just going to be able to hone his craft at the Browns training facility. He's got to go away 
And I, I just, you know, you kind of wonder. That's a big investment they made, and if it doesn't work out, that franchise is going to be set back several years. Well, and here's the other thing. He didn't play because he had never issue last year, even on top of the um, allegations. Well, he didn't want to play for the, Titan, the Texans. Yeah. He didn't want to yeah. play for Houston. It wasn't even – he didn't even – he did not play because of the sexual assault allegations. He just didn't want to play for Houston. And they didn't want well, him to play kind of too because of the sexual assault allegations. But right. he literally did not want to play, and it wasn't like he got suspended last year. He just chose not to play. So he's missed – all this time, he's missing a yeah, lot of time this year. Practice, you know, that's he's missing a lot of valuable reps that quarterbacks in the NFL need to continue to be successful. And the Browns have, I mean, like I said, you know, they've really invested a lot of money into him. And if he doesn't work out, the franchise is just it's it's going to be a, a troublesome situation for that franchise. Here's the other concern I have about the Browns, and we, and we need to close up because we got to talk about some YouTube stuff next segment. Um, here's the other thing that concerns me. I mean, say even if Deshaun Watson was totally fine, he had no allegations or anything. The Browns don't have receivers. No, and, no, and no. nobody's talking about this. Um, uh, Amari Cooper is decent. Yeah. I'm not saying he's terrible. Uh, but Amari Cooper's been accused of either looking really good or disappearing from games. I mean, he's not a consistent 80, 90, 100 yard receiver that you think with with number one guy. So that's your number one, Amari Cooper. Uh, your number two, I was listening to the Browns pregame show. Uh, Donovan Peoples Jones, who mm. had some really good games last year, but he's an injury risk. I'm not even sure if he's healthy enough to play right now. Yeah. And he had a couple good games last year. So are you anointing him your number two just based on that? Uh, you've got David Bell, who's a third-round draft pick. Heard some nice stuff about him. But are you saying your third-round draft pick's got to be your number two receiver this year? I mean, if, if you're putting that mandate on him, you didn't really do your offseason right. Uh, you got Anthony Swartz, too, which uh, he's got speed. I like speed. But Anthony Swartz, um, not this week, but the previous week, he had a couple really key drops. Yeah. Now, that doesn't mean Anthony Swartz is a bust or a, a failure. But, again, you've got guys with huge question marks on them. That's your number two receiver. And, you know, say what you want about Baker Mayfield. And I'm still not convinced Baker Mayfield is going to be the top quarterback. You had inconsistencies at receiver last year. Uh, a lot of uh, Landry was hurt a lot. And you had, you know, the who knows in Odell Beckham Jr. And he's not with the Browns anymore. But I'll tell you, Craig, I'm not even sure if I like the Browns receivers more this year than last year. And no, no. It's no. in inter- Well, and see, here's the big question. And I'll mention this quick because obviously, you know, Steelers are rivals to the Browns. I think the Steelers might be a little bit of a similar boat to the Browns because I, I see Mitch Trubisky and Jacoby Brissett. They're similar type of quarterbacks. Um, the there was a Steelers podcast network we used to be on. Long story, uh, but th- there's one guy in that network that talks about Mitch Trubisky could be MVP candidate this year. I'm like, what? That's crazy. <laughs> um, so I mean, I see Mitch Trubisky as a okay average quarterback. Yeah, the Sewers have good enough defense, or maybe he wins 10 games because the Sewers defense is that good, which I don't think you can say the same thing about the Browns defense. But I don't see Mitch Trubisky as that much better. And there is some serious talk in Pittsburgh land right now that not that Mitch Trubisky's done a terrible job in the preseason, but Kenny Pickett has really come on. And I can't imagine Kenny Pickett's going to be a super, super franchise quarterback, but he's played really well. And you say, do you, it's like a poker hand. Do you have an average poker hand with Mitch Trubisky and you have a decent year but not a spectacular year? Or do you take that chance and hope that Kane Pickett could be that up-and-coming guy right away? And if he is, maybe you contend for a Super Bowl. But you're taking a risk because, you know, is Kane Pickett that guy his rookie year? Who knows, you know? I, I mean, he may be or he may falter. Yeah. But so far, I mean... The poise he's shown has been really good. Problem with the Steelers I have right now is their offensive line is ugh, it's pretty rough at a point. Yeah, and I think that's going to kill their running game a little bit. 
and I think it's going to, you know, cause a little ineffectiveness with Trubisky too. And I think, I think that's going to be their biggest bugaboo. And, and I'm not saying that the Steelers are going to be like a top ten pick kind of team, but they kind of look like a team that if they don't get the offensive line and quarterback play, they could be a top ten pick. But I will say too, though, I think if their defense does the job that they're looking for it to do. They run the ball with Najee Harris, who can certainly run the football pretty well. And if they get just enough, whether it's Pickett, whether it's Trubisky, whether it's even Mason Rudolph, like it's all about getting enough from that position to win the games, you know, squeak out, you know, the type of games that they need to. And and maybe they could be one of those types of teams. And I, I thought of it last year too. You know, I thought with Big Ben being a little bit over over the hill a little bit as far as you know his talent level arm strength but he ended up leading that team to a playoff berth trubisky you know it's kind of one of those things where they're they're asking for trubisky to just not screw it up or kenny pickett or whoever the quarterback may be but i just get the sense that the offensive line being even worse than what it was might be their downfall to being able to provide a good running game and open opportunities for Trubisky to make plays. I don't know if the offense line's worse. They had a really rough game in the second game. Their first game, they weren't great, but they weren't terrible. They had some really weird... I mean, where pretty much guys ran around their offense line. Uh, Kendrick Green, who was the top pick of theirs last year, was bad. on, And, you know... Hopefully it was just a one game, you know, crap show, but ooh. They're, Who they're gonna have a tough schedule to open up. I mean, it's Bengals, Patriots, Browns, Jets is seemingly a winnable game, but then they've got the Bills and Buccaneers. I mean there's not yeah. a lot of weeks off in the NFL these days. There's some really good teams and that AFC is just absolutely loaded. You know, I kind of feel like you need to go ten and seven to be an AFC playoff team, even though because there's so many good teams, I think there's going to be a lot of cannibalization, and people are going to go ten and six, or, or ten and seven, or maybe eleven and six, and not have those like super, you know, thirteen and four records or fourteen and three records. But it's going to be tough to be a playoff team in the AFC this year, I think. Trubisky didn't play too bad over the weekend. You should see, sometimes like YouTube will say, hey, here are all of Mitch Trubisky's plays where you can watch her without having to watch two hours of a game. Right. You should see, Craig, he had four or five plays where he barely escaped being getting clobbered. And it was good for him to escape, but it was just very strange. The yeah. other thing that frustrated me was he escaped from a real big mess, which was good for him on the first play of the game. But then he missed. Uh, Deontay Johnson got free. Uh, in the kind of confusion of Trubisky almost getting sacked, Johnson had his defenders. They could have had a touchdown on the first play, and Trubisky couldn't find yeah. him. I mean, he kind of misfired. And that's the thing. I'm not crazy about a rookie quarterback. Pickets look good so far, but the problem is with rookie quarterbacks, there'll be some good games and there'll be some rough games. This happens all the time with rookies. All right, well, Craig, we went a little bit over, which is fine. Uh, let's preview some of the other stuff we got coming on. Um, do we have a special guest for the YouTube show? I don't know if you... Yeah, we do. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, my wow. wife. Wow. My wife will be joining us. Her first appearance wow. on the YouTube show. Yeah, she's excited. She's ready to go. Uh, amazing. I, I yeah. really... Um, uh, how do I say this? There's something going on in my life that I've shared with Craig that, that took up a lot more of today... Than should have. It's nothing bad. Everything's fine. Just stuff I probably shouldn't talk about on a podcast. I didn't get a chance to watch it, so I'm going to need to watch it while we talk about it. So I'm glad your wife has been um, read up on this stuff. Uh, this is exciting, yeah. Craig. I yeah. you mentioned to me earlier today. I'm like, ah, I don't know if it's going to happen, but man, she's ready to go. She's rare and go. She watched the the video with me, and she's ready. She's ready to talk. So she's mad we've talked for 35 minutes on the Browns. <laughs> so she's well, like, she's, itching. she's itching to go. She's like, let's get okay. started. She wants to get going. She wants it. All right, sounds good. And then, uh, let's see. Well, uh, we got a bunch of other stuff coming up um, on the podcast. We're trying to get back to having different new stuff coming out each week. Um, and later this evening, um, 
I'm going to try to do some more football content with Pierre Holland. Hopefully, we'll try to get that out uh, sometime tomorrow. So, check us out. Share us with your friends. Craig, I didn't even get a chance to tell you this. Um, I had, what do we call it, a professional meeting today? Just with um, some possible clients. Is that how we phrase it? Yeah, I think so. The podcast came up. It was very interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> People are asking about our podcasts all over the world. I'll, I'll just put it that way. <laughs> I, I tell you what, it's it's made its way down to the uh, the newsroom here in Clarksville. Uh, you know, I, oh, we talk wow. about it in the newsroom. You know, Holy so cow. Holy people cow. are people are excited about the, the podcast. It's kind of odd though when you have a professional discussion like the one I had today, or when you're with professional when that podcast has come up. It, it kind of you catch your breath a little bit. <laughs> you're like, whoa, what? <laughs> should I be talking about this that much? Yeah, so, yeah. I don't know. So if we have new people listen to our podcast, hi, new people, how are you doing? Yeah. Um, so very good. All right. Well, um, again, you know, download Cash App. You know about it right now. Uh, it really works. And for Craig, this is Chris. Have a great day, everybody. Hi, I'm Jennifer Mooney. Welcome to what is our new Hope Interrupted podcast based on the work from our book, Hope Interrupted, that I co-authored with my good friend, Byron McCauley. Hey, Jennifer. You know, I'm looking forward to this podcast as much as I was look, looking forward to writing this book with you. We hope to interview some uh, high-impact folks as well as have a little fun. We're going to cover stories of hope. To learn more about our podcast and our book, please visit www.hopeinterrupted.com.